hey hey it is a Saturday evening oh my goodness all right all right so let's share this Facebook would take me to the right place come on now Awesome. So I'm going to share this with our Facebook group, Sexy Powerful Intuitive, Rebellious Influential Tribe. You can search Sexy Powerful Intuitive up in the search bar of good old Facebook in the groups. If you're watching the replay, drop a CTR down in the comments. Let me know you are watching the replay. <clears throat> Let's share this. There we go. In the group. So it is a Saturday night, and hey Angie, um, since a lot of you are moms, I know evening time works really well, and let's face it, sometimes Saturday nights, we just, they're not date nights anymore, they're just, you know, life with kids, and the kids are in bed, and we have a little bit of quiet time. So I wanted to pop on today and give you a little bit of an insight and a tip on um, and go a little bit more in depth when it comes to getting into alignment with the desires that you have. That is something that we talk about a lot in the spirit group, in my programs, in my coaching um, with my clients, as well as, um, let's see, we're going to share this with my page too. All right, with my prof my personal page. Get all the people on here. So as you pop on, make sure you say hi. And um, I can see there's more people on here. And sometimes Facebook doesn't even show me there's as many people as there really are. So as you pop on, don't be the weirdo that just creeps on here. Say hi and uh, let, your, let it be known that you're being a part of this party tonight. Um, so I hope you had a really good week. I hope you had plenty of time for yourself this week. I'm a big proponent of that, of helping you make sure that you do have time for yourself, getting things done for yourself, time with your husband, time with your friends, um, get to do things that you love. And today I want to talk about getting into alignment with the desires that we have. So if you've been hanging around for a hot second, you happen to know that a lot of what I talk about, have been talking about in the recent future, right? I talk about the things that I'm learning. I talk about the things that I have just gone through, um, things that I have learned in order to help you um, hopefully learn from some of my mistakes without making the same mistakes, um, but also to shift perspectives and to let you kind of see some of the things that I'm learning and look at things differently instead of just taking things as they are. Hey, Steph. So um, I want to talk about this concept of alignment and that energy is energy is energy is energy. So I talk about that there's with clients that there's different types of energy um, that we have the energy of love, health, time, money is an energy, um, you know, and then you can even break that down into like the different types of love, the different types of affection. Like you can really get specific with as specific as you want, but generally those are the ones that I work with and talk about. And what I'm going to talk about today is the understanding, Hey Lisa, um, is the understanding that energy is energy is energy is energy meaning that it's all the same. So when we have an area of our life, uh, for a lot of women, and you can hit the heart and thumbs up button, it happens to be money that is a typical, the biggest struggle, the biggest piece of our mind. Hey, Bonnie, um, money is something that we struggle with a lot, and money is currency, currency is energy. Sometimes that we have issues with time. In the Purpose Party this past week, which was phenomenal, by the way, um, five day free challenge with some totally badass and fantastic women. Um, uh, I talked about time and time is a struggle for a lot of us. It's something that we feel like there's never enough of it's working against us. Right. But my main point today is that there's like, all of these things are still energy. So if you're struggling in one area, if you're feeling stuck in one area, your health and fitness, Hey Kayla, um, if you're struggling in one area, right? If you've got something that you're like, if I could just make this area better, right? Your marriage, maybe the relationships you're in, your work, your business, your health, your fitness, the money stuff, the time stuff, all of those different pieces, like they all come down to an energy. There's one area that you're struggling with. 
this is when I coach people on that. I'm like, well, get clear on what you desire. You have to be aligned with what it would feel like to already have that, right? You have to feel it in your body because it's our emotions that allow us to manifest what we want. When we're at a vibrational frequency, we attract the pieces that are at equal of um, vibrational frequency that we are, right? We have to be aligned with it at the same level for it to be received with it, with us. So does that make sense? Like heart thumbs up. You're good on that concept, right? That if you're looking to create something in your life, you need to be aligned energetically with that thing. So typically we're looking to manifest better things, right? I'm really have yet to meet somebody that is looking to manifest worst things, um, worst things. So we're typically looking to raise our vibration. We're manifesting good things. We're manifesting more of good things. We're going to new levels, right? Up levels, quantum leaps, like going for the breakthrough to that next level in whatever area of life it may be, right? So we want to get better, which means we need to raise our vibrational frequency. Well, how we do that as human beings, our vibrational frequency and what we are able to um, vibrate at is a feeling, right? Vibrations are, they're a type of feeling. That's how we, um, sense them. So that's our emotions at our core, right? It's not just a sense of touch. It's this understanding that our emotions are what we are vibrating at, what we are putting out energetically into the world. Okay. So does that make sense? Emotions are what you, like what you are feeling in your core being, not just like the fleeting anger moment or the bad day or, even sometimes the sad things that happen or when we get hurt by something, but like at our core, those emotions are what we are feeling and that's the energy that we are putting out into the world. Make sense? Heart, thumbs up that our emotions are what we are feeling and that's the energy that we are vibrating at and putting out into the world. So we are like a giant magnet. The energy that we put out is attracting everything that's at that level back to us, right? That we want, that we desire because you get to choose, right? That's free will. You get to choose what you are saying yes to and allowing into your life. Okay. That's the next piece. Do you understand that part? That that's your free will part, that you get to choose what you attract and what you allow into your life, right? You get to choose what you are available for. So what your emotions are feeling is vibrating at a frequency. You are attracting the things that you desire at that level, right? And you have desires that are higher, but you've got to raise your vibrational frequency in order to attract and allow those things in, right? So I want to talk tonight about a little bit of a hack, a little bit of kind of this like sneaky sort of backdoor way to change your vibrational frequency when we're looking at manifesting the things that we want, creating, right? Manifesting is kind of this like, um, like popular thing right now. It's like really big in the world. Everybody seems to be talking about it, at least in my newsfeed, everybody's using the term manifesting, but it's about creating it, about making it happen in your life, about receiving it in that way. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Heidi. Hey, Christy. Misty, you popped on here too. I'm glad. Awesome, y'all. Make sure you say hi. Um, so we're understanding we're all on the page, the same page so far. Motions, energy, alignment, getting higher vibrations through higher emotions. Joy happens to be the highest vibrational frequency that we have, we're able to align with. Hey, Brandy. Awesome. Love you guys jumping on here with me. So we're all on the same page there, right? We're vibrational beings. We attract things. We are, our emotions are what we are putting out there to attract um, equal forces, like at the level that we're at, equal um, vibrational things, right? So that's all clear. That's awesome. So you're looking to up level your, your life, right? You want to make something better, no matter what area it is, your marriage, your money, your health and fitness, um, you know, time, anything like that, that you like relationships, all that stuff. You could pick any area and you want to make it better. You want to attract better things. You want to attract more money, better love, more passion, more pleasure, more free time, like uh, be able to have enjoyment with your time instead of feeling so rushed all the time, right? You want better health. You want to lose the weight. You want more energy physically, right? So all of those things are vibrating at the next level up for you, what you desire to have. Now it's your choice. You get to decide what you believe in. There's a whole lot of things in terms of how big of a step you can take 
to manifest. I'm all about like quantum leaps are awesome. You want to make a big step? Fantastic. Um, But for some of us, what we can get behind in terms of our beliefs and where our mindset is with limiting beliefs and the subconscious story that's running on, sometimes we can only take, we have to take a few little steps first, right? Every person is different. That's where a lot of coaching comes into play with like figuring out what's going on under the surface. So you want to go to the next level. You got to be at a higher vibrational frequency. So you get clear on what you desire. You get clear on what you want. Here comes the life hack, right? You, let's say your goal is about money. You're like stressed about finances right now. You're making just enough or just under enough every month that it just doesn't feel good. And you're like, I want, I want more than enough. Like I want to make like $500 extra this month, right? Like, let's say that's your step is like, I want to make $500 more than that. Right. Or maybe your next step is $5,000 this month through your business instead of $1,200 that you're like, I want to take that leap. I want to get to that level. That's the amount of money I want to, I want to work with. And I choose money because that's typically something a lot of people can relate to, right? We've got this thing in our society and our culture about money. Um, so you want to manifest more, which means you need to get at vibrational frequency of what that is in order to get it to come into your life, to create it. So when you feel that, right, what part of what I teach is how to journal out the process of what's going on, the stories that are running, how to rewrite those stories so you can actually remove some of the old blocks and beliefs that are stopping you and learn how to trust yourself to get clear on what's yours, right? I used to be a perpetual uh, overreacher where like I would self-sabotage in a way because the goals I would pick would be like so fucking massive that I'd be like, yeah, like I got it. I believe in it. It's awesome. It's so cool. And then I'd be frustrated when I wouldn't achieve it. Well, that was actually a subconscious thing that I was self-sabotaging myself because a whole lot of limiting beliefs. There's also people that tend to underreach and they'll set goals really, really, really small. And the universe is really, really, really cool in this way because if you set your goal too small, it's not going to give it to you because it knows what you're capable of, right? So God and the universe know what you are capable of. And if you're selling yourself short, it's going to sit there and be like, "Uh uh-uh, that ain't going to work. You need to step up and own who you are, right? So you get clear on these goals. You get clear on what you want, right? Tapping into your intuition is a big part of this, getting clear on what's mine. What, what goal do I need to pick that works for me? Hey, Erica, happy to see you popping on. I haven't talked in a few days. It's been kind of weird. Um, so you're setting this goal, tapping into your intuition, be like, yep, that that's mine. I can feel it within me. That's exactly what I want. I know I'm clear on that, right? Your pride and ego can shut the hell up and get out of the picture. Um, and you're like, this is mine and you trust in that right? And you can do a really great journaling session. You can have a fantastic meditation session and you can even have a session with your coach and you're like, yeah, this is it. It feels so good. And then you're like, awesome. I set this goal. Now we're supposed to release this to the universe. You get clear on a desire. You get clear on a goal. If you start to like nitty gritty focus on those tiny little pieces about it, you're obsessive about it. And that just means that you're fearful about it. You're fearful. You're worried about it. You're stressed about it. You're doubting it. We're supposed to release this. And I say supposed to, because I'm still working on this as well. This is still something that I struggle with. But when you set the goal, you know that it's yours. You're clear on it. You can feel that it's yours. You can feel that energetic feeling when you're journaling and meditating. And then you release it to the universe. You release it to God and you already know it's mine. Like I've already had that session. I already know it's mine. I'm so clear on it. You release it, you let it go. And the universe, you take inspired action every single day to help yourself achieve it. Now, the problem is during that process of taking inspired action. And when we leave our meditation and we close our journal is our monkey mind takes over and we get afraid and we doubt things and we get worried and we stress out about it. And the more that we like focus on money that we're like, I got to make it, I got to make it, I got to make it. The more that we put worry energy out there, which is a lower vibration, right? We're fearful, we're doubtful, we're worried about it. We're stressed about it. We're not sure about it. We're not trusting in it. We're not having faith about it. And that's way down here in vibrational frequency. And the desire you have is up here. So how do you fix that, right? That's one of the most common problems that we have is you can feel really good when you're sitting there meditating and getting clear on it, but then everything in between is like, I I don't know, I'm not sure, that whole process, right? Heart, thumbs up, if you guys can relate to that. I can't be the only one that goes through that monkey mind madness after I close my journal or leave my meditation that all of a sudden I'm like, oh, but, but what if it doesn't, like, 
I don't know, like, what if, what if it doesn't happen? And then like, then what if I can't pay my bills or what if it runs out or, or like, what if I screwed up or like, who am I to do that? Like, who am I to say that I can make that much money? Right? Like, these are just some of the stories that I know I hear. And I know some of my clients have as well. So, right. Awesome. Glad I'm not the only one. Um, so how do we fix that? Right? Well, if energy is energy is energy is energy, if all energy is exactly the same, then what if instead of focusing on trying to get aligned with that $5,000 you want this month, that you know how that feels, you know how good that feels, and it's like this really high, really fantastic, totally energetic, really amazing feeling. What if instead of focusing on that money, because the money is what you want to work on, right? Your vibe is lower. That's why you're not making the money you want to make right now. So money energy for you is like, it trips you up, right? It kind of makes you feel a little less, a little lower. So what if instead of focusing on the money energy, you put more into something you're really good at? So for me, that's like health and fitness stuff and like my physical energy to my marriage, to my parenting, to the amazing spirit community, which like I said, if you guys haven't joined our private Facebook group yet, um, you can go do that. So you can search in the bar, sexy, powerful, intuitive in the groups and it'll show up. Or I think there's a link on my page. Yep, there is. You can, on my Facebook page, you can click it um, to join there, right? So if I focus on those things, because I know, I know that I know those things always make me feel so good, right? So what does that do? When you start fix, fixating on something else you know you can feel really good about, it raises your vibration. And you're raising your vibration and you're playing to your strengths and that's keeping you aligned with the things that you want. Hey, Michelle. Oh, no worries. You can totally watch the replay. And we talk about stuff like this all the time in our spirit group. So, um, so I would love for you to comment below. What's one area of your life that you know, what's one thing you can do that always makes you feel really good, right? That like for me, I can go get a workout and it instantly changes my mood and puts me in a high vibe, right? After I work out, And I usually pick a workout that I like to do. I may not, sometimes it's an ass kicking workout, but most of the time it's something that's a little more fun to like get me in a good mood or we'll do a dance party in the kitchen with my kids or we'll go for a walk Um, or we will go out to eat because I love food. I'm like food obsessed. If you guys want to make me happy, send me food. Dairy free, please. I can't have dairy things anymore. But just a little tip if we ever are in person together that food, sushi, coffee, always go to's with me, right? They can always put me in a good mood. My husband makes fun of me because I sit in the restaurant and when I'm eating sushi and I'm literally like bouncing like with my chopsticks like a little kid because I just get so happy about it, right? So what if, right, Lisa says eating a good meal. Like what are those things for you? What can you think of right now that you can do that's going to make you feel really good? That's just going to put you in a happy mood. Sometimes it's sex. Sometimes it's painting. Sometimes it's going for a walk. Sometimes it's reading a book, um, doing meditating. Sometimes it's a workout or traveling or planning a trip or researching something. Like what tickles your fancy and puts you in a good mood, right? Because what if every time you started to feel worried or stressed or like low vibe about that money goal or whatever that goal may be, right? That area that you're tripping up in right now. If you felt that, right, you have an awareness, that's how the process works, you have an awareness that you're like, oh man, I feel myself, like I feel crap about it, I'm worried about it, I'm stressing about it, I'm doubting it. What if you then decided, okay, I'm not going to focus on that, right? So it's like purposefully distracting yourself. So I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go, I got to do a workout instead, or I'm going to go color something with with my daughter, or I'm going to make some really good tea in a really cute Pooh Bear mug with his little honeybee, right? Because that makes me feel good. So what if you did that, right? Going for a drive in the country, reading, playing a game with my sons, manicure, pedicure, sex, like quality time with my kids, sushi. Yep. See, Bonnie, there's a reason we connected. Love a sushi right there. (laughs) Quiet time, doing whatever I want, like all of those things. So that's the little insider like life hack. Sushi, music, sex, not in any particular order. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Love it, Steph. Um... That's the little life hack that we can start doing to really help ourselves because so much of the stress that we have, the overwhelm we have, the exhaustion we have, the rushing that we have is self-induced. It's things that we do to ourselves. 
So when you're looking to take your life to the next level, to change something in your life, to improve something, to make something better, to seek the next level of happiness, the next level of growth in whatever area of life it may be, it's about where your energy is, where your energy is, right? So your energy is not just your energy about money and that money energy is going to attract what you want. Like you can get, that's important The further you get into the journey, it is important to start to understand that there are different beliefs and energy alignments that need to happen. For instance, just to give you something to help understand that is like the energy of saving money is different than the energy of making money is different than the energy of having money. It's different than the energy of investing money. When you start to really look at the limiting beliefs that you have in the stories that are underneath the surface. But one of the quickest things you can do for yourself when you start to feel very stressed about what's going on or worried about the goal that you've set and wondering if it's going to excuse me, going to happen or not, is to shift your energy to something that you know will make you feel really good. Because what happens is when we start to go down that train track and that cycle and it starts to snowball of like, oh, I'm worried about that. Oh, I don't feel good about that. Oh, that's not going to happen. Who are you to do that? Like, you're not good enough to do that. You're not smart enough to do that. Like, remember the last time you tried, you totally fell on your face and you made a fool of yourself and people made fun of you and you were rejected and you were kicked out of the club and like all those things like start to run, right? They snowball. Ooh, singing, Michelle. I am not a very good singer. I know you are very good, but I do like to sing. So that one works for me too. Um, so it snowballs, right? And it starts to just like build on us and we end up going down that track and that's like you're deciding to run all of a sudden looking at the ground like this. And if you're running and you're looking at the ground like this and you don't have anything that's letting you see what's ahead of you, what happens? Like you run into a freaking pole or a tree, right? Or you trip over yourself or you run into somebody like it's not a good picture and it's not a fun experience, That's what it's like when we let ourselves continue down that path instead of having the awareness and being like, stop, shift, man, like go to a different train track right now immediately. Because if you try, sometimes you're too far down that track to be able to actually do any good because you're triggered so far. You're so doubtful. Some of the bigger fears and core limiting beliefs are triggered. And it's just like, you know what? I can't even breathe right now. So let me get to the side before I try to figure out how to fix this, right? Like do yourself a favor, set yourself up for success by like raising your vantage point, right? If you've got this massive thing that you're trying to solve and it's huge because you're standing in the middle of it and it's just swirling around you, the best thing you can do is raise your vantage point. So change your energy and bring yourself way up because when you go up a couple of levels, you can see solutions from up there. When you're down in it and you're in the middle of that spiral and you're going faster and faster down that nasty track, you can't see solutions. You, you can see tiny things that sort of, but we're grasping at nothing. So raise your vibration, raise your vantage point so you can see a solution. So you can see what's actually going on, right? So you can actually be like, okay, like, no, we we went down the wrong track and you kind of backtrack the track, right? And get to that point of, What triggered that? Where did that come from? What is that belief that set me down this track? And I need to reframe that, rewrite it and remove it, right? That's something that I do with my clients and teach you how to do is to get rid of those beliefs and to start shifting them. Some beliefs you can straight up pull out, get rid of and never have to do again. Other beliefs will continue to show up from time to time at different levels for you, but you get better and better at starting to acknowledge them, starting to see them. You become less and less into it and like personalized and like totally day ruined by it. And it's more about being objective about it, being able to be, um, I think um, I heard Amanda Francis, I think today she said the gentle observer, which I think actually Gabby Bernstein is the one that talks about that, that you become the gentle observer of some of your thoughts and you start to look at it and be like, oh, nope. Like that one's not serving me. We need to fix that one, right? So it just gets less dramatic and you get quicker at it. You get stronger at it. It's like building a muscle. But sometimes those beliefs, they'll start to, you know, you'll do really well for a while and then you'll get to a new level and that that belief will kind of rear its ugly head again. And you go through the process, but you're better at it. You're up higher. You're able to see better. You notice things quicker. So 
Um, so yeah, so that's what I wanted to share today about being able to give yourself a little bit of a hack to raise your vibration, to change where you are so you can see things better, so you can align with the desires that you have, right? Because if you're, um, if you're raising your vibrational frequency and you're letting yourself be up at a higher vantage point, that means you're able to actually hear your intuition to hear the inspired guidance, Right. And the whole next part of that and able to do that is when you hear your intuition talk to you and you hear the inspired action come in, you trust it and you do it. So there's a lot of times that people will they're like, oh, no, I got this idea, but they don't trust it. Right. Or they asked for something and what they asked for shows up and they like wanted it and like the solution is here. And then they don't trust in that option that was actually delivered to them and is the answer to their question because it costs money, because it's so new and scary, because they just don't understand it, right? But if the if your gut and your intuition says, yes, that's the answer, and you know and you have faith that the universe brought you that answer and it was meant for you, but then you get to that point and you say no because of money, which is a super common thing, like I get it. Like you just undid so much momentum, right? Because you gave into fear. You chose fear. You chose your limited view of how it's supposed to help you, of how you're going to pay for it, of how the money's going to show up, of how it's all going to work out, right? You can't see past that, right? So it's like you're here and you asked a question and you asked for a solution to a problem that you have and the universe is like, oh, great, like here's your package, like little stork. Oh, here it is right on your doorstep and you're like super excited and you're like, yeah, like that's exactly what I wanted. I love you. This is so cool. This is so great. This is exactly what I needed, exactly what I taught. Like my gut's super excited. I totally know this is meant for me. This is awesome, but I can't afford it. Like really? Like you, that's literally you being like, oh, nope. Take that back because I wanted all free stuff. How is that going to activate your faith in any way, right? Which is the ultimate goal of what the universe and God want is to have you build that trust in yourself and in the universe to be able to spread that vibration, right? Like to be able to build that level of faith that like this thing gets delivered to you, but you can't see what's past that. You can't see what's next, what's going to happen after that. So you're like, oh, nope, like I don't think that's going to work. Like, seriously, you're going to sit there and tell God in the universe that you don't think what they just brought you as the answer to the question you asked is going to help you, is going to work for you because you're worried about money, because you're worried about the cost, right? But if you know and you're, if you have that kind of, if you have faith and if you know in your gut that it's meant for you and you're feeling called to do it, but you've got that little niggling fear that shows up, when you listen to the fear, you undo the momentum that you just got and you tell the universe, I'm okay with staying stuck with where I am. And that's not what you want. I know that. Like, that's not where you want to stay, right? That's why you were asking for a solution. That's why you were asking for something else, right? So it's this process of, yes, it is called a leap of faith for a reason, right? So you either have the faith to know that this came for me. This is exactly what I need and what I want. And yes, it's scary because it is something I'm unsure of and I don't know about, but my mind, my human brain does not need to know all the answers beforehand, right? That's when you get to lean into faith. That's what activates your faith. And that is what manifests everything that you need is when faith is activated. That's why when you start to pick these like little tiny goals, the universe says, no, you can't have those either because you're not using your faith at all, right? The energy of the universe doesn't have to help you with that. And that's not what it wants, right? Like when you activate your faith, that's when you really start to show up and grow and show yourself exactly what you're capable of, that you trust yourself and you know that you will always find a solution. You know that you will take action that is necessary and you will always do what needs to be done. Even when it's hard, you are that type of person. And here's an opportunity for you to show that even more because you know you were created for different, for reasons, for purpose, for something really great. And you know you have the universe on your side and that's where your faith is so when you ask a question and when you're asking for up levels and you're asking for guidance and solutions and the universe presents you with an opportunity you have to say yes you don't have to know how it's going to work out like how is none of our business our 
teeny tiny human brains cannot even fathom all of the millions of ways that something could end up working out for us or how something can be delivered. So when we choose fear, we're choosing to believe in our really limited brain, our limited mind, rather than choosing to say yes and believe in the limitlessness of the universe and of what God has capable capability of, right? So does that make sense? Hearts, thumbs up that like, I know it's scary a lot of times, especially when money is involved because we have so many money stories running under the story that are all based in fear and lack and doubt and scarcity. Like I get it when you're asking a question and an opportunity arrives, right? The opportunity knocks on the door. It's natural for us to be like super excited, but then also we have this like ego and pride that are like, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if it's not right? What if I spend the money and I don't use it and it doesn't work out? What if I invest in it and I don't make the money back? Like, what if I make the first payment, but then I can't make the second payment? Like, we go into this massive drama and I pick on money because that's just super common, but it could be a whole myriad of other beliefs, right? But that's just super common that a lot of us can relate to. So we end up saying no. And when you say no, even though your gut says, even though your intuition says, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted, what I needed. This is all the answers I've been I've been looking for. Whether it is through a person, through a program, through an opportunity, through a connection, through an experience, right? That like God delivers our miracles through someone or something else. Do you know that? That your miracles are going to come through someone or something else the majority of the time, right? So, because that's how they get to work, right? Bonnie, are you reading my mind right now? Uh, Maybe, I don't know. (laughs) Um, So it's natural for us to feel that fear, but that's your chance. That's your free will. You get to say yes, or you get to say no. That's your free will. Because God in the universe cannot make you do something. They can't make you choose something. You have to ask for it and you have to say yes to it. And you have to say yes to it again and again and again. And when you say no, even though your intuition and your gut says, yes, this is mine, you say no, you stop all that momentum and you tell the universe and you tell God, I'm good staying right here. And I'm not willing to leap into the faith that I have in you. And I don't actually trust in you as much as I think and say that I do. And sometimes that's really hard for people to hear, but that's the truth. When you say no to something that the universe and God has brought to you, that you know in your gut, your intuition is telling you yes, and you don't trust in your intuition and you don't trust in that in the universe and what it's brought to you, and you say no because you choose the fear, you choose the lack, you choose the scarcity, you don't have the type of faith that you say you have. And it's a perfect opportunity for you to grow that faith because It's not just faith in the universe that comes out of a situation like that. It's also faith in yourself. And when a woman has faith in herself and what she is capable of and what she can do and what she is meant for, like, watch out. The world needs to watch out for the women that are choosing to find out exactly how capable they are. Because there's nothing more powerful than that. Like women are wicked powerful. When we choose to honor our intuition, like every single woman has the ability and the direct line of connection to the divine God, universe, source, whatever your terminology you choose, you have a direct connection to that through your intuition. It is a gift that you are born with. And unfortunately, through a lot of our lives, we turn it off and we numb it and we dull it and we turn the volume down and we learn to distrust it. And that is distrusting ourselves. Is distrust a word? That sounds funny. Um, We don't trust ourselves. I'll just stay away from words I'm not 100% sure of. (laughs) So we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust what our intuition and our gut is saying. We start to rely too much on what our little monkey mind, human brain that is so limited, thinks and knows and says. And we listen to the ego. We listen to the pride. We listen to the fear rather than trusting in ourselves and trusting in that connection and trusting in what God and the universe have in store for us and what we're meant for. And yeah, sometimes it is scary. And yes, you will make mistakes, but it's not a mistake because you're going to learn from it. Like you literally cannot, we're talking about all kinds of things today, ladies. Like this is awesome. So, and gentlemen, if there happens to be gentlemen on here, but I didn't see any jump on yet. Um, you cannot make a wrong decision. 
because the wrong decision would mean that you like went down the path and you have to like turn around and go back. I, that's true. I say logical eyes here, right, Angie? <laughs> that's my favorite word though. I really like that one. Distrust just sounds weird to me. It's not coming out right. It's like when you're typing a word and you're like trying to spell it and you're like, I don't know if that's right. And then autocorrect isn't doing it right. Like, yeah, see, okay. Stephanie says distrust is a word. It just sounds funny to me today. It's like when you're trying to spell a certain word and it just isn't looking right. Um, so you cannot make a wrong decision. You literally cannot. There are times when we will sit and we will agonize. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? It's like picking the fucking petals off a flower. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Like drama up the wazoo that we just make it so hard and we get so stressed about it. Do I buy this? Do I do this? What, what about that? Should I do that? Like maybe yes, no. And we just like make it this massive deal. And it's like, you know what? You can't make a wrong decision. Whatever you choose, own it and do it and learn from it and enjoy it and ride it all the way to as far as you can, right? Because you cannot make the wrong choice because every single decision you make, you're going to learn something from. You're going to learn something from every decision you make. It's not just the, mis- the quote unquote mistakes or the failures or the, the quote unquote wrong decisions that you learn something from. You learn a lot from the right decisions, quote unquote, right? Um, you learn a lot from those decisions as well. So every decision that you make, you start to learn from all of it. So if you're learning and it's allowing you to course correct and learn something about yourself, hey Alexa, uh, if you're learning with about yourself, about what you like, about what you don't like, if you're learning about like how this works for you or if you didn't like that or how that did show up for you, like if you're learning anything from any decision you make, then it was the right decision. So if you know that, you can't make a wrong decision. Like we sit and we agonize like do, do I kiss him? Do I not kiss him? Do I ask him out? Do I not ask him out? Do I buy that coaching package? Do I not buy that coaching package? Do I buy that car or do I buy this car? And we like, do I buy this house and do this? Do I take that job or not? And we agonize about these things. And it's like, just make a decision because as soon as you make a decision, the universe will back you up every step of the way. Uh, that was me last night, says Kayla. It's, it doesn't feel good, Right? It does not feel good to be in that place. It stresses us out. It eats at us. We don't sleep well. We're irritable and grumpy. We gain weight thanks to cortisol that ends up happening in our system. Like, it's just not good. It's on any level to be in that position where you're like agonizing over some decision, no matter how big or little it could be, right? Um, so that's the ultimate like red flag right there is that it doesn't feel good. Everything that you are meant to do is going to feel good. So that's why like actually making a decision feels good like in that moment. And then what happens after that, if you let yourself worry and stress about things like that's a whole nother story, but making a decision actually feels good, right? It releases lots of chemicals in our brain when we actually make the decision and we're like, yes, this is the one I'm going to go with, right? So because it feels good. Everything that we are meant to be doing feels good to us. It leaves us with a sense of peace, of like soul quenching peace, right? Even if it was hard, even if it was difficult, even if it was uncomfortable, even if it was awkward, um, and even if it, it did hurt a little bit, but that sense of peace inside is always an indicator that you did the right thing for you. And following your intuition and following what you're meant to do always feels that way. And making a decision knowing that you cannot make a wrong decision because you will always be learning, right? Because even if you do something and you realize that you're like, it's like going to a party. Like how many times in college do you go to a party and then afterwards you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go to that one again you know, like some theme party of some kind, or you go over to this one house that you've never been to or some frat party. And you're like, yeah, you know what? Uh, next time I'm not really going to go do that. Or like you do, do try something new. Um, like at the coffee shop, for instance, I learned that I'm not really a big fan of matcha. And like, there's a lot of people that are obsessed about it. And maybe it was just that particular coffee shop and the way that they did it, but it's never like the wrong decision to try the matcha. That was not a wrong decision. 
right? I debated a latte or this matcha thing. And I was like, well, let's try that. And then I learned, well, you know, next time I'm going to choose my, my other latte instead. I didn't make the wrong choice. So we need to stop beating ourselves up about it and making this process of making decisions so agonizing and stressful because everything that you do, you start to learn and you get better at better at honoring who you are, what you like to do, what makes your life better, right? Does that make sense? We've talked about a whole lot of things. We went around a lot of things about like energy and making decisions and being in alignment and how incredibly wicked powerful women are when we decide that we're going to trust in ourselves more than trusting in the stupid monkey mind and trusting someone else and what they think about us. Like your gut and your intuition is the most powerful thing that you have and it is a tool that is gifted to you from birth from before birth that you have this tool that is in you that you get to use and for a long time we haven't for a long time we've let other people talk over us and convince us that they know us better and that they know what we need and what we like and what we should be and what we're good at and the path we need to be walking and we've let other people tell us who we are and that's not okay anymore there's a lot of stuff happening in the world that is learning, it's teaching women how to stand up for themselves, how to start speaking up for yourself and how important that is in every moment, no matter how uncomfortable or no matter what solutions you see or don't see, no matter what position you're put in, honoring yourself is the single most popular popular, powerful thing that you can do for yourself because your soul, your heart, yourself is the only thing that you have at the end of the day. Like you can have everything in life, all the things, all the people, all the relationships, but it's still you living with yourself everywhere you go. And if you've got stuff that's eating you up or you know, just like, just like things that are, that you don't need to hang on to that stuff anymore. And we don't need to shut up. Like how many times do you, after the fact, realize that I should have said something, I should have spoken up, right? Or you wait too long to finally say something. Oh, thanks, Alexa. Um, it's just, it's not necessary anymore. We don't live in that world. We get to break that conditioning. We get to start stepping up, showing up, speaking up for what you want, for who you are, not who everybody has said that you need to be or like no matter what the consequences, right? Like we live in 2018. It's a time for you to start owning who you are within first, right? When a woman tries to speak up for herself, but she's not confident and grounded and clear in who she is first, it's never, it's not received well by other people because they're feeling that energy of being unclear inside, right? Does that make sense? Like hearts, thumbs up. That makes sense. Like you got to be aligned and clear within yourself first before you try to communicate with other people about it because they're going to feel the energy within you like, and they might not be able to understand that that's what they're feeling, what's going on, but they can feel when you're like, you're not clear about it. You're not truly confident in it. And then you get the real dickhead people in the world that are going to be like, I can blow her over with one backhanded compliment because she's not, she's this frail little thing standing there. She's not sure about what she's talking about, right? And that's when the one comment is going to be a massive trigger for you. It's going to knock you on your ass and you're going to go down the spiral train of negativity and snowball off into all those limiting beliefs and crap, right? So getting clear about who you are first grounded and confident and authentic and this is me right and I and I forgot about her for a really long time it's really really common for women but it's also really really common for moms to feel that way we've been taught that we put all of ourselves on the back burner and we get leftovers if there happen to be leftovers after our children after our kids after everybody else in our life and let's face it there's never leftovers right we get the tiny little scraps and that we wonder why we feel like shit all the time why we feel exhausted why we feel um, overwhelmed and confused and lost and irritable and frustrated and why we have more bad days than we do good days and we convince ourselves that being okay is just fine and you know what <laughs> fine is not a good word when a woman says it Right. And maybe you may not be saying it out loud, but you're telling yourself inside, I'm fine. We all, your husband knows, 
right? The men in your life know that when a woman says, I'm fine, she's not fine. And yet internally, we're telling ourselves that all the time. I'm fine. This, this is good. This is okay. I'm okay with this. This is fine. This is good enough. And we don't need to do that anymore. It's time to start speaking up, start showing up, start getting clear on who we are inside before, and then start communicating it with the world. Cause that's, what's needed. We're so bright. We shine so bright and we are so powerful and so capable and we have so many amazing things to bring into this world and we're holding ourselves back. We are letting ourselves settle for less. We're saying no to those opportunities that are knocking on the door all the time. All the time. There are opportunities right in front of you. One small step, one small step, one small step, one small step, leading you down a path. These opportunities that are here, knocking, 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 knocking. And you keep saying no because you're afraid. Because you don't want to get hurt. Well, you're already hurting yourself. Denying your truth. Denying who you are. Denying what your intuition says. Go do this. This would feel so good for you. Go do this. And you're already saying no, right? You're so worried about getting rejected by everyone else and, and hurt by the world and have the rest of the world think that you're not good enough or this person's going to say you're, you're not welcome or you don't belong or, or something like that, right? Some type of pain is going to ensue at the hands of someone else, some other comment or something, but you're already doing that to yourself internally. And that's the conversation that needs to shift. That's what needs to change. Does that make sense? Hearts, likes, thumbs up on the same page. We talked about all kinds of really cool stuff today. I'm super, super excited. I'm <laughs> glad I got on here. This week has been weird because I did the purpose party this week. So I was really focused on that group of women and being in that group. And it was like the best five day challenge I've ever done. And it, it, it's still, it's available right now. If you guys, I'll put that link below. It's still for free for this week. You can still go in and get the replays and be a part of that community. But um, it's going to be end up being a course that I sell for a price, which is how you run um, smart ways to run a business, right? Five-day purpose party. Um, it was phenomenal. And like some of you are on here, it was so good. It was so good. It was such a great week. And I like was on a high all week long from doing live streams all night with these women. And I was like feeling kind of, you know, depressed or whatever tonight. Like it was just kind of like, oh, I'm okay. Like now what do I do? (laughs) So I was like, oh, let's reconnect with the bigger community. Uh, Let's reconnect with the broader vision here and the public again. And it was such a great experience. I'm glad you liked it, Bonnie. It was really, truly amazing. Like I'm still reeling on some of the things that were so good. I I recommend it, Misty. It was really good. So all the replays are still up. You still have all the content that you can go in and get, be a part of the Facebook group and all of it. Um, It was really, really good content, a really fun week, lots of breakthroughs, like manifesting money, getting breakthroughs with what's going on internally with family dynamics, like all kinds of things. Um, So I'm excited about that. Um, And the other piece is that all of that was done. I did the purpose party because it's the perfect stepping stone and leading in piece to the trusting self group program, which starts today. Well, it starts March 5th, I think is the first day that we're like dropping content open, but the launching is open today. So I'm super excited about that, which is the four month group program that I do with women. Sorry, fellas. Um, I haven't decided to do anything specifically with men yet. I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to drop that uh, link here. It's, it's four month group program. I ran it once at the end of the year last year. Uh, we ran October through January and it was phenomenal. It was so good to see women learning how to trust themselves, learning how to tap into their intuition, uncovering who they are, having breakthroughs in their marriage and in their dynamics of racial relationships, manifesting money, getting clear on their purpose. Like, all the things happened in that group program and I'm like super pumped to do it again. I wasn't planning on it, but I apparently really wanted to because it sort of poured out naturally. So 
here we are again. Uh, that's a four month group program. We have 17 weeks of content. So yeah, there's a bonus week and you have two group coaching calls every single week, plus the private, private Facebook community that I am active in every single day. So you have access to me that way. The VIPs get private coaching every single month, which is awesome. That's always a great way to personalize it and to get some extra support in that. So I encourage you to go check it out if you've liked tonight's message um, and uh, take a look at that. See if that's something that's called to you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about it, do send me a message. Happy to help you figure out if it's right for you or not. And the other piece that I've been talking about very openly with it is that I encourage you to send me a message and to start the conversation about it if you're interested in it and you want to do it, but the stopping point for you is money. So if you're feeling like called to do it, you're excited about it, you're like, yeah, this is really great, but you're sitting there like, but money, like reach out and start the conversation with me because I don't want money to be the deciding factor of why you can't do something. It's totally disempowering to be in a position where you feel like money is telling you yes or no, where like money is the boss that says you can do this, but you can't do that. It sucks to be in that place and it's really disempowering for a woman. So I want you to not be afraid to reach out and express your interest and get your name out there and start the conversation to start shifting the energy around that so that you can start really changing your vibration around things like that so you can stop letting money be the one that controls everything for you. It's a really, I know what that's like and I don't like being in that position either and that's not just because I'm a control freak, right? I don't want to give up that control but it's also that it's like it's not necessary and we make it dramatic and we can shift it and we can start to get ourselves out of that place uh, with some really great tools and guidance. So I encourage you no matter what to take a look at it and then to message me if you're interested and if you want to do it. Um, or you can just click the sign up button and be like, I'm in, we're going to figure this out later because faith is a beautiful thing and it you have the ability to do so much in your life and you're settling for less and I know it sucks and you're in survival mode and it just doesn't feel good and you want to get out of it. This is a fantastic place to start. We had a really great four months with the last group. Um, I will say as a final note for those of you that are still on here that the Trusting Self group program, all four months, all the live calls, all of it is free for you for if you are a private client. So if you're interested in private coaching with me and you want to do the Trusting Self program, uh, that's like a massive bonus in there in and of itself, then send me a message and we can talk about what that looks like. Um, but And the cool thing about Trusting Self is that you have lifetime access to it. So even though I'm running another round, I'm not kicking the old people out of the group and out of the content. Like everybody still has access to it and they're going to be a part of it. So it will continue to grow and to snowball in a really positive community of support for you because that's often what we need is like the accountability, accountability, accountability and the place to turn that's safe and the place to share and really get outside input and guidance and support so that we can continue to build because let's face it like we are women and women are community based we need our tribe we need our community that's one of the huge parts of our life that leave us feeling fulfilled and supported and safe so that's a big part of why I'm keeping everybody in it no matter what round it is and the best part is when you do it that way everybody gets the new content like I'm going to continue to add things and and go deeper into things because I'm continuing to grow and to learn more and to advance further into wealth like I look at what I was teaching originally when it came to wealth consciousness or with marriage or confidence what those are kind of the three main coachings that I do um, and now all the spirituality pieces and like how much I've changed with what I've been able to teach people just in the past year alone has been really phenomenal so you continually get new access to that so I encourage you to go check it out if you're resonating with the things that I talk about. If you're not in our Facebook group, I recommend you go do that. The Purpose Party link is in here. That was a fantastic five days, totally free, like fantastic, amazing women as a part of that. Um, and the Trusting Self group program, I'm like super pumped about. So I would love for you to be in there, for you to join us. It's going to be a phenomenal run for the next four months because it's February right now. So that means we start in March and then we in April, May and June. So by the end of June, where do you want to be? That's your ultimate decision and what's going to help you get there, right? Look at where you want to be, what position you want to be in, how you want to feel. And then you ask what's going to help me get there. And uh, trusting self is probably going to be a big part of that if you're still hanging out with me. So have a fantastic rest of your night, ladies. I'm going to drink my tea now that it's you know, lukewarm because I've spent more time than I had intended chatting with all of you, but I love it so much. Um, 
Have a fantastic rest of your night. Questions, comments, concern, I will always show up and support the woman that shows up and speaks up for herself. So don't be afraid to reach out and send messages or emails, whichever you prefer. Have a great night. Don't forget that you are meant for more. You are meant for incredible things. You are a very capable, very powerful woman. Have a fantastic night. Be fierce about who you are and what you desire and making it happen for yourself and embrace your truth. Talk to you soon.